Imposing is a word that aptly describes the Commodore. He is a large, strong, sound, agile working dog, covered by a coat which requires a thorough, hands-on examination. The heavy white cords are actually a protective outer covering, a form of built-in armor for this guardian of the shepherd and flock. The Commodore is an intelligent, thinking dog, bred for centuries to take responsibility and to make decisions for himself. He can be headstrong and stubborn, but responds well to consistent, firm training. Through this visual presentation, we will attempt to portray the ideal Commodore, and you will see many examples of the breed. Studying these examples, plus hands-on examination of many Commodores, will help you gain the knowledge necessary to better understand the breed. According to the standard, the Commodore is characterized by imposing strength, courageous demeanor, and pleasing conformation. He is a big, muscular dog with plenty of bone and substance, covered with an unusual, heavy, white coat. The length of this coat is determined by age, grooming, and coat quality. Your first impression of the Commodore should be of a large, ruggedly built, powerful guard dog. There must be nothing slight or refined about him. In profile, the appearance is rectangular rather than square. His coat makes him look like the sheep he guards, but when he is alert and on duty, the Commodore has a commanding and regal presence. An adult is an earnest, courageous, and very faithful dog. The young dog, however, is as playful as any puppy. A Commodore of any age is devoted to its master and will defend him against attack. He is not used for driving the herds, only for guarding them. The Commodore's special task is to protect the animals, living outside with them, without protection from weather, strange dogs, or beasts of prey. Because the Commodore was bred to think and act independently, he cannot be expected to be outgoing with strangers, but he usually is affectionate with his owner or handler. When approached with respect and confidence in the ring, he is calm, though still watchful. On the job, he reacts quickly and can spring into action with startling speed and power, displaying great energy and agility in the defense of his charges. Let's begin our detailed study of the Commodore's structure by examining the head. The head should be of good size and in proportion to the rest of the dog. Even with the heavy coat, you can see that this dog's head is too small for the size of the body. The head looks somewhat short in comparison to the seemingly wide forehead, with the muzzle somewhat shorter than the skull. The top line of the muzzle is straight, and nearly parallel to the top line of the skull. The muzzle is wide and coarse, not pointed or snipy. Under the coat, the skull is broad and powerful. It is somewhat arched from the side, with good development of the brows. The stop should be moderately well developed. Remember, it is always necessary to feel the shape of the skull with your hands. This dog appears to have a good, broad skull. This skull is too flat. There is insufficient development of the brows. This muzzle is powerful and blunt, but is too long in comparison to the overall length of the head. This dog's head is correct. The muzzle from tip of nose to stop is shorter than the skull from stop to occiput and the planes are parallel. The nose is black with wide nostrils. A dark gray or dark brown nose is acceptable, but not desirable. A flesh-colored nose is a disqualification. This nose is poorly pigmented, but is not a disqualification. Judges are unlikely to encounter the true flesh-colored nose that is a disqualification. This dog has a good black nose and the correct tight, dark lips. This dog's lips are too loose. 
and this dog's lips are poorly pigmented. The teeth should be large, white, and fit together in a scissors bite, but a level bite is acceptable. Judges should check for full dentition. Many dogs are missing teeth, especially premolars, as this one is. Missing teeth is a serious fault. This distinctly undershot bite is also a serious fault, as is a distinctly overshot bite. In older dogs, the central lower incisors are sometimes slightly out of line and worn down like this. It is not ideal. This dog has a correct scissors bite. Commodore ears should be V-shaped and hanging. Erect ears, or those that move toward an erect position, are faulty. Ears are large, moderately long, and should not fold back. They are set rather far back on the head, slightly above the level of the eye. This dog's ears are of good size and are correctly placed. The eyes are medium-sized and almond-shaped, but should not be too deeply set. The edges of the eyelids are gray. The iris of the eye is dark brown. Light color is not desirable. Blue-white eyes are a disqualification. These eyes are of good shape and are well-placed, but are too light. These eyes are correct for the breed. They are very dark, well-shaped, and have good dark rims. The neck should be of medium length and moderately arched to hold the head erect. Any dewlap is a fault. The neck should blend smoothly into the shoulders without an abrupt break at the withers. It should be muscular and strong and in proportion to the body. How would you evaluate this dog's neck? It is too short. And this young dog's neck looks shorter than it actually is because his hair stands up so much. In dogs of this age, it is especially important to feel to ascertain actual proportions. This bitch's neck is in proportion to her body and blends smoothly into the withers. The Commodore's body is characterized by the powerful deep chest, which is muscular and proportionately wide with well-sprung ribs. It should never be shallow. The chest should reach to the elbow. In all but the youngest dogs, this depth can be judged only by feeling. The point of the breastbone should not protrude much beyond the point of the shoulders, but should not be sunken behind them either. The shoulder blades must be moderately long and well laid back. The upper arms should be muscular and equal in length to the shoulder blades, set close to the body without loose elbows. Again, this must be felt. This dog appears to lack forechest. The breast is broad and well developed. Consequently, the forelegs are not set close together. The forelegs should be straight, well-boned, and muscular, viewed from any side. They should also be parallel, like this. The front should be well-muscled. Any looseness or slackness is a fault. Elbows should be tightly in line above the leg, neither bowed out nor pulled in under the chest. Once again, this should be checked by hand. Pasterns should have moderate spring, like these. The Commodore should never be down in pastern. The feet should be strong and rather large, with close, well-arched toes. The pads are hard, elastic, and dark. Nails should be black or gray, like these, but this is seldom seen. However, it is essential that the Commodore have well-arched feet, like these. A flat, splayed foot would not hold up well under working conditions. The top line of the Commodore should be level and firm. 
It is difficult to evaluate this young dog's top line because of the coat. This top line is soft. However, the handler has obscured the real top line by pulling cords over the back. This may create the appearance of a level back. Judges should not be fooled into thinking this is correct. This is an excellent top line with a level back and muscular loin. The Commodore is a remarkably agile dog, partly due to a flexible, well-developed loin. He is only slightly longer from sternum to buttock than he is tall from withers to ground. This dog is correctly proportioned. But this dog is too long in body. The necessity of feeling under the coat to determine the overall proportions of the dog must be emphasized. In some cases, a dog can appear to be too long in body because of the amount of coat hanging down in front of the point of the shoulder. The croup should be sloping and of good length. This dog has the desired angle of slope to the croup. This dog is too flat in croup, which is incorrect. And this dog is too steep in croup. Here is a good muscular rump with a slight slope of the croup to the tail set. The tail should be a continuation of the line of the rump and should be long enough to reach the hock joint as seen here. It may turn up slightly at the end. The tail should be carried down, although when the dog is excited or moving, it is carried higher. This tail is carried correctly and is not curly. This tail is set too high as well as being too curly. It should never be carried over the back like this. A dock tail or bobtail is disqualifying. The rear of the commodore should be well angulated to match the front. Both the stifle and hock joints should be well bent and the hocks should be fairly short and powerful. The steely, strong-boned rear legs are covered with highly developed muscles. The Commodore's thighs should be fairly long for sufficient angulation, like this. This dog lacks sufficient rear angulation. This dog, on the other hand, has too much rear angulation. When viewed from the rear, the legs should be straight. This dog has a good rear with parallel, moderately let down hocks. Dew claws must be removed. The movement of the Commodore should be light, leisurely, and balanced. He takes long strides. The Commodore should give the impression that he can cover a lot of ground quickly with a minimum of effort. The stride should be long and light. The Commodore should never move in a labored fashion, appear to take short, choppy steps, or exhibit a pronounced roll over the back, as seen here. This roll should not be confused with the normal swing under the body of a medium-length coat. In short, the Commodore should give the impression that he is gliding over the ground with a level, stable top line, and should appear fluid rather than bouncy. Although this bitch is moving well, her head carriage is higher than is desirable. The Commodore should not move with his head held high like this. This dog's too low head carriage is not desirable either, as it gives the impression that the dog is moving downhill. This dog's head carriage is correct for a trotting Commodore. When judging a Commodore in full coat, Gait can be evaluated by watching where and how the feet land as the dog moves. From the front, the legs must be straight, converging slightly as speed increases. Elbows must not swing out, and feet must be carried forward in a continuation of the line of the leg.
From the side, the gait is well balanced. The dog's front legs must reach well out in front, and the rear legs must extend well out behind in order for the dog to exhibit the typical long, light stride. This dog is unbalanced. The rear is more powerful and provides more drive than the straight front can handle. To compensate for this, the rear feet show a faulty kick-up with each step. This dog is well balanced and has excellent reach in front and drive in the rear. Let's watch him in slow motion. Notice that as the front foot comes in contact with the ground, it is extended well out in front of the dog. The rear of the dog is powerful and provides good strong drive. The rear foot moves smoothly with each step and doesn't exhibit the exaggerated kick up of the last dog. From the rear, the legs converge slightly as the dog moves off. Rear movement is best evaluated by watching the pads of the feet as they emerge from the coat. This is more easily seen on a young dog, not yet in full coat. Clearly, this dog's pads and legs are moving in a straight line, which is correct. As opposed to this young dog, whose legs and pads are not straight. This dog is moving away correctly, with slight convergence. The feet and hocks are carried through properly. The coat is the hallmark of the breed. It is a dense, weather-resisting double coat. The puppy coat is relatively soft, but still shows a tendency to fall into cords. In the mature dog, the coat consists of a dense, soft, woolly undercoat, much like the puppy coat, and a coarser outer coat that is wavy or curly. The coarser hairs of the outer coat trap the softer undercoat, forming permanent strong cords that are felty to the touch. A grown dog is covered with a heavy coat of these tassel-like cords, which form themselves naturally and, once formed, require no care other than washing. The coat is longest at the rump, loins, and tail. It is of medium length on the back, shoulders, and chest, shorter on the cheeks, around the eyes, ears, neck, and on the extremities. It is shortest around the mouth and lower part of the legs up to the hocks. If a Commodore's coat has not corded by the time the dog is two years old, it is disqualified. The immature coat does show a tendency to fall into cord-like curls or clumps. During this adolescent stage, from roughly 8 to 18 months, the coat next to the skin will feel lumpy and in some types of coats will seem matted. These mats, when torn apart by hand, will grow out into cords. To those not familiar with the breed, a coat at this intermediate stage may be very unappealing. Despite its appearance, a dog whose coat is at this stage of development should not be penalized if the coat texture is correct. This coat does not appear to be corded, but upon closer inspection you can see that it is. The fluffy ends, seen here, must not be confused with an uncorded coat. Part the coat and look into it. This matting is actually the beginning of the corded coat. This coat is a different texture, but is also corded. This can be felt as well as seen. The hair on the rump often cords first. It must be remembered that length of coat is strictly related to the dog's age. These dogs show the progression of coat growth by age. When most people think of a mature Commodore, they think of a coat that is at least five years old. There should be no preference shown for longer coats. A dog with a correct, shorter corded coat must never be penalized for being younger. Remember, too, the Commodore is an active, working dog. A good coat can be marred by run-ins with burrs, youngsters playing with each other, or puppies teething on a dam's coat. The dog should never be judged on coat alone. You will see great variation in Commodore coats.
the width of the cords will vary from narrow to wide, and all widths are acceptable. Furthermore, the actual texture may vary considerably from dog to dog, becoming harsher with age. A curly coat is not desired. Silky or straight coats are a serious fault. Short, smooth hair on head and legs is a disqualification. Failure of the coat to cord by two years of age is a disqualification. The color of the Commodore coat is white. Any color other than white is disqualifying. The Commodore's distinctive cords are made up of dead hair, and while the color is white, it is never the pure, shining white of a brushed coat. Judges are not likely to see a dog that should be disqualified for not being white. If a dog's coat is discolored by staining or injury, the true color can easily be seen next to the skin. In the ideal specimen, the skin is gray. Pink skin is less desirable, but is acceptable if there is no evidence of albinism. The nose, lips, outline of eyelids and pads are dark or gray. The gums and palate should be dark also. This bitch has good dark pigment on her lips and nose. This dog's lip pigment is not solid black, but is still acceptable. This dog's lip pigment is very poor. This dog lacks pigment around the eye. This dog has good dark pigment beyond the eye rims. Let's discuss the Commodore's size. Dogs should be 25 and a half inches and upward at the withers. Bitches, 23 and a half inches and upward at the withers. While size is important, type, character, symmetry, movement and ruggedness are of the greatest importance and are on no account to be sacrificed for size alone. There is a tremendous variation in size within the breed, with dogs occasionally reaching over 30 inches at the withers. A Commodore, whatever the size, at or above the lower limit of the standard, should be an imposing dog. Small size is not preferred. In two dogs of comparable quality, preference should be given to the larger dog. Size below the minimum 25 and a half inches for dogs and 23 and a half inches for bitches is faulty. To preserve this rare and noble breed, judges must familiarize themselves with all of the components of a quality Commodore. Above all, remember that although the corded coat is the most striking aspect of this breed, the quality of the dog under the coat is of the utmost importance.